Oh, good evening. Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this handy little book stand out of scraps you probably already have lying around. Check it. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. I went ahead and cut up some mock-ups over on the Globeforge laser cutter. I've seen these online, but I don't have the measurements. So the laser cutter allows me to experiment and see what sizes work. Something like this, except it's gonna have one solid piece of wood here, one solid piece of wood here, and one solid piece of wood on the bottom. All three sides or all three pieces will be nine inches wide. And this book is, 11 inches, so we'll make them 11 inches long. I think we're going to split the angle here. So on a, what kind of triangle is this? I, this is not an isosceles. This is not an acute. This is a equilateral. I don't know. All three sides are exactly the same. So that means you would have a 60 degree, 60 degree, 60 degree. But if you split that, you get a 30 degrees. I think the first thing I need to do is see what is behind this wall to see what kind of scraps we got. This is embarrassing. This is like when somebody shows up at your house unexpectedly and your underwear is just all over the bathroom and in the kitchen. This is, this is like that. Uh, there's a piece of walnut, but that is definitely not enough. So it's only six inches. I think, uh, I think we're gonna have to go a plywood route over here. Ugh. Ugh. You see that? How do you get anything out of there? Dan, I need you. I need Dan's help. My brother, Daniel, he's supposed to come over here and take all this plywood off my hands for me. It's just over the years, it's added up to be too much. I found what I'm looking for is yeah, this guy right here. This is, um, see the Baltic birch or maple plywood. I think that is gonna work. I'm just winging it, figuring it out as I go. There's no real plan here. I've got my fence set to nine inches and then we're going to rip a nine inch piece out of this piece of plywood. So we ripped a nine incher. So now we're over at the miter saw. I've got my stop block set to 11 inches and we're going to cross cut three pieces at 11 inches. You can do this at the table saw or the circular saw or a track saw. I guess even a jigsaw if you want to. Run what you brung. Come on. Ah, good enough. So we have all three pieces cut. Before we cut the, the miters on, on each one of the pieces, we're going to edge band the edges with a contrasting piece of wood. So I think I saw a piece of walnut in the closet. Yeah, we saw, we de this was 10 minutes ago. We definitely saw a piece of walnut in the closet and I'm just going to edge band the edges with the walnut. I suppose I could have done this in the previous step before cross cutting them. We're winging it people. We are winging it. What you gonna do? Respect the plywood. And I got a bunch of these cut. We're just going to glue it on the ends. Again, this would have been better to do the edge banding here before cutting everything to length, but I didn't think this through. A lot of my life I didn't think through. And nothing but masking tape. No clamps today. Let's not use clamps today. Ugh. This thing, this drives me bonkers. For this third one, I'm only putting the edge bending on one side. I think for this other side, I'm gonna cut a piece of walnut that's a little bit wider, and then maybe that could be used as a little pencil holder if we route a little groove in there. I think that'll work. 
Again, we're just winging it. We're just having fun today. We routed a little groove in there and I also put a little round over on there. And that's just going to get glued on what's going to be the bottom piece. So we got the, we got the whatever, uh, the edge banding on the one side and then the little pencil holder on the front. So just like before, we'll glue this in place. For the two side pieces, I thought, hey, let's get a little bit fancy, use a laser cutter and etch some sort of pattern in there. And I thought, well, let's stick with the triangle theme. So if you remember the little template that I made up in Illustrator, I'm gonna take that, play around with that for a little bit, see if I can come up with a cool design just to etch it in the sides for no other reason than lasers are cool. So now that we have all three pieces made, it is time to cut the miters on here. We need to get our blade to 30 degrees. Here's the issue. It only goes to 44 degrees. That's not gonna work, so we need to make a jig. This is just one, two, three, four pieces in the shape of an H that rides over my fence and then slides along like that. So I can take my piece, clamp it up against there, and then set my blade to 60 degrees. This is a quick and easy way to do extreme angles on your table saw is if the air compressor needs to kick on right now. Right now, air compressor. Okay, so this is an easy, I lost my train of thought. This is a quick and easy way to get extreme angles on the table saw. So you just move the board upright, clamp it up against this fence, and then you can run it through the blade. Instead of putting my blade at 60 degrees, I'm actually going up to 61 degrees. That way, uh, it gives, that way it's off just a little bit, and then the corners will meet up perfectly. You'll see what I mean here when it comes time to glue it up. We'll throw this over the fence and then we'll bring this up until it kisses, just kisses the blade. And that's still gonna run through. Outside of your piece goes up against the fence. You clamp this on there. Bob's your mom. Thirty degree bevel and thirty degree bevel. We repeat this on the other two pieces. Don't reach over a spinning blade. Bad things will happen. Your shirt could get caught in there. Your arm could get caught in there. You got to be safe. Stay inside and be safe. All right, there we go. So the reason we went to 61 degrees instead of 60 degrees is that little bit of air will work in our favor and we'll get nice solid seams here. So that is looking good. So it is time to glue this up. Once again, I'm just going... If Dan was here, he would shut off that damn air compressor. Obviously there's a leak because there's no reason for it to kick on right now. I'll wait. Thank you. So once again, we're going to glue this up with only tape and glue and that should be perfectly fine for this. It is time to take the tape off of here. I'm realizing something. We set 
our fence to 61 degrees and it left a little bit of a gap down down there and in there so maybe instead of 61 60 and a half 60 and a quarter we're winging it people we're winging it i'm going to take some walnut stardust and some wood glue and kind of just fill that in there so but this is looking pretty good i'm pretty happy with this so while i am sanding and finishing this i'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is squarespace you should all know by now, I have been a long time user of Squarespace. All of my websites, including my podcast, Making a Podcast, and my main site, makesomething.com, they're both Squarespace sites. And there's a reason for that. It is so easy to use. I can sell both digital and physical goods. You don't have to know anything about web development. I know many of you are woodworkers and makers, and maybe you wanna start selling your stuff or you just wanna present your items to the world and show the world what you do. The Squarespace site is the perfect solution for you. You probably already have a Twitter or Instagram account and you can just feed that right into your website. So as you're updating your social media stuff, your website's also going to update. The templates are absolutely beautiful. Every one is a great starting point and you can modify things, you can move things around, you can change colors, you can, you can brand it to make it look like it's yours. I was a web developer for over 10 years. I worked for a couple of different ad agencies developing a website. I know how to build a website from code, from the ground up. I never ever want to do that ever again. Squarespace just eliminates all of that. You don't have to worry about the back end or servers or downtime or upgrades or any of that. You can just focus on you, your business, what you wanna share with the world and selling stuff. I've been using Squarespace for a long time for a reason, before they were a sponsor. It's just easy to use, it's beautiful. So visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for making these videos possible. Now, let's put on the final touches of this guy right here. We are using our favorite Kentucky oil. I got all the gaps out of there with some sawdust and, and some glue. So I'm really happy. Ah, whatever freaking, wherever I got these, I think it's from Hobby Lobby. The sponge does not stay on. All of them break. This is actually um, Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's a, uh, you, you put a heavy coat on, you let it sit for a few minutes and then you wipe it off. Friends of mine run that company. Now's a real good time to support small businesses. This walnut came from my friends at Kencraft, family owned business here in Toledo. They sell online. There it is, book sets on top, just like so, keeps your place. Has a little place on the front there for your pen and a place to put your glasses. A real quick and easy project. I thought we would work on a bunch of quick, easy projects you can make from scraps that you probably already have. So for the next couple of videos are gonna be pretty pretty simple little projects that uh, you can do without heading out to the store, heading outside, going to pick up materials and stuff. Good way to use up some scraps. I really, really like how this came out. If you are wondering what book I have on there, this is composite materials. And then I got a couple other books on composite materials. I'm studying up on doing fiberglass and carbon fiber materials so I can work on the go-kart body. We've got a couple of videos coming out real soon on making some fiberglass bodies and just uh, maybe some other creative ways you could use epoxy and, and fiberglass in your projects to add some creativity or just some some uh, curviness or, or depth. So that's, uh, that's what I'm studying right now. Uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow with another video. And uh, as always, be safe real safe, healthy, have fun, stay passionate, and make something.